It is perhaps one of the great luxuries of modern life. Toss waste into the bin and forget it. Yes, we may sort and we may bundle, but beyond that, it becomes someone else's concern. Joining us now to help follow the trash, Aaron Mahoney, Environmental Commissioner for York Region, and Norman Lee, Director of Waste Management for Peel Region. Welcome to the both of you. Okay, so we, um, we're gonna get into this. I, I wanna set it up a bit for our audience. Here's what we um, collect uh, in terms of waste and what it costs. Let's go through this. Ontario municipalities um, collect from over 5 million households, that of course is province-wide. That service costs taxpayers $1 billion per year. Municipal waste departments manage 4.9 million tons of material annually. 47% of that gets recycled or diverted from disposal. Now, here's what our municipalities process. 900,000 tons of recycling. This includes everything from paper to glass to metal, plastics, 900,000 tons of organic. So everything from your yard waste, your Christmas tree to kitchen waste. All told, as of 2010, municipalities in Ontario dispose of about, and get this, 690 kilograms per capita. Okay, Aaron and Norm. Um, Let's get into it. I've got props today. I'm going to pull them out. And we're going to talk about where they go appropriately in terms of, uh, of my waste. But first of all, I want to set this up a bit. You're from different municipalities. And, you know, the old saying, location, location, location. How much does that matter when it comes to talking about waste? I think it matters quite a lot. I mean, the residents of York Ridge and the reason why we're so successful in diverting waste from landfill is because they're committed to the environment and they see their participation in the blue box and the green bin programs as some of the most important commitments that they, they make is what they do in their house to separate out these materials. It's different from place to place within different the region? Different from place to place. I, what Norm does in Peel Region, some of the characteristics of our programs are different from those in Peel. But I'd say, um, you know, we both have blue box and green bin programs, but the details of those programs are different. Okay. I don't want to get too, too much into the details. But Senator, what are some of the differences between your municipality or your region and others? Well, Aaron's right. I mean, all, all Ontario municipalities, especially large ones, have the same suite of programs. We all have the blue box. We all have the green bin. We all collect yard waste. Um, we all have a garbage can. We all have a garbage <laughs> can um, because not everything is recyclable and not everything is recycled. Uh, Different municipalities, and Peel in particular, we have what we call community recycling centers where residents can come and, and drop stuff off themselves if they didn't put it at the curb, if they're going away for a holiday, or there are some things, uh, household hazardous waste, for example, that they can bring there. So our blue box programs are generally the same. Green bin programs tend to be a little different depending on technology. Toronto uses uh, anaerobic digestion and they're able to remove diapers and manage those carefully. Okay. So, so they have diapers in their green bin, we do not. I am pulling out props on this program okay. tonight. So here we go, metal can, soup can, everyone uses this, plastic food container, or something like that. Okay, so I consumed these products, presumably. Yes. I chuck them out in my blue bin, uh, put it out on the curb, and then it vanishes. But Aaron, take me from what, like once it's out of my hands in my blue box and the collection truck comes by and I see it go in there, what happens to these items that get mi mixed up in, the, in this bin of plastics, glass, paper? Yeah, let's, let's talk about these two items in particular because there's two different things that happen with them. The uh, metal can, it's collected, it's accepted in our uh, blue box program. It goes to what we call our material recovery facility where we separate out all those commingled plastic, metal, and paper uh, materials that we collect. That, that metal is subsequently separated and bailed and it goes to um, places in Ontario that produce new metal food cans or paint cans. In the case of that plastic um, a container that you're getting the dried fruit in, because once it's empty, it's flat, and it, some of those kinds of containers also may contain a metal liner. We don't accept that in the blue bin. That ends up, in our case, in the garbage. And um, in the case of York Region, because of our commitment to energy from waste facilities, we do take the fuel value of the ma material out as we um, combust it in our energy from waste facilities. Okay, you're, 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 bu you're busting this because look, I don't know if we can get a close up of there, Kevin, but 
here's my little recycling thing. That I would throw this in the recycling and you're telling me, huh, that's not where it's supposed no, to go. No, and, and I'll tell you why. Because once you've eaten the, the prunes or whatever's in there, that ends up to be a flat type of material. If you look at our sorting facilities, it separates out all the materials based on their physical characteristics, their shape and so on. So that would end up in our paper stream and contaminate our fiber that is very important that it's clean and uncontaminated so we can make it go to market and not have it end up in landfill. Erin, I'm still stuck up on this little sign. It's telling me to recycle this. It's saying it's recyclable. Whether or not it's accepted in all local programs, you need to check with your local municipality to see what uh, what's Okay, th this is interesting because, I mean, I've got, I don't know, every week, 10 of these, 20 of those, diapers, whatever. I have to call my my local municipality in order to say, hey, does it, it says recycling. Are they like taking me for a ride or can I check this in the recycling? Well, and you, you've touched on one of the challenges we have in our industry, Pia. And what it means is it's recyclable where facilities exist and, and they don't exist in every municipality. Um, and you've, you've actually picked an interesting package because in, in, in the industry we call this a stand-up pouch. They're the new type of package that's, that's very much in favor with the retail industry and with the packaging industry. I would argue also and with consumers, I would think this generates less waste in, it, it, rather than a box with a package inside. It, it actually has a very good environmental footprint if you look at the life cycle of the package. Because you can put more of these packages on a truck and you're hauling more food and less package around, it, it, you know, it cuts down on fuel consumption, greenhouse gases, good environmental footprint, a little tricky. They're new to the industry, so we're still trying to figure out how best to recycle them. We actually have an organization where municipalities are working with packagers and other people in the waste industry to try to find ways to recycle new packages. And as uh, packages evolve too, I mean, if I can just add, because you don't need to phone us. Um, we, all municipalities a lot now, have tools online where you can just dial in. We have a tool and an app called a Bindicator. So for your unusual <laughs> materials, you can just dial in 24 seven. You know, if you're wondering late at night what you should be doing with that, you can use these apps in the convenience of your own home when you need them and uh, figure out what you do with the materials. But just because it has a little symbol on it does not not mean that the facilities exist. We're doing a lot in Ontario. I'd argue we're one of the leading jurisdictions, but it doesn't mean because it says recyclable that the facilities exist to, or the end markets to mm. accept the material. All right, an anomaly perhaps in this, but we, you know, there's cans, there's paper and all that. So for all that stuff that you do recycle, do you sell it? Where does it go? Do you make money off of it? We do. In, in York Region, we make about uh, $7 million for our basket of goods price um, coming out of the Blue Box program. So that helps us pay for some of the costs to stand up the program in the first place. Um, so it's, it helps we get uh, metal uh, revenue from our metal. Most of the material that's still in the blue box, in our case in York Region, is fiber. So we get paid for that as well and for mm -hmm. some of the recyclable plastics. Who's buying this stuff, Norm? Well, in, in Peel's case, we sell the fiber to our processor, the, the company that runs our material recovery facility, and they sell it back into the mills in, in Ontario and elsewhere. Uh, for all of the containers, whether it's steel or aluminum, plastic, uh, we market those, we have a broker. Every week they put out a call to see who will offer the best price. Hmm. Uh, often it's an Ontario recycler that buys them, sometimes it's not. We have all heard stories um, about, you know, I throw something in my recycling and someone says, you know, that actually ends up in a landfill. How much that really goes on? Well, I'd say if we accept it in the green bin, uh, in the blue box program, we want to keep it out of landfill. And so I think it's important for residents to know that it's not a make work project. If we're asking them to put it in the blue box, we have a viable market to keep that material out of landfill. But the reality is today, even with the great job we're doing, you know, uh, in York Region, 58% of our waste is um, diverted and even over 80% is diverted mm. from landfill because we use energy from waste facilities. But there's still 30, 40, 50% of material that is generated in the house is going to uh, landfill facilities. In yeah. some. Um, and I want to talk about one more thing when it comes to recycling. I think it was back in 2012 in your region, not that I'm picking on you, but I just use an example. There were reports that uh, York Region faced um, a glut of glass and, and sent it to a landfill and that Toronto's glass was too dirty um, so it ended up in landfills. Is that kind of thing still happening Arne? Glass is actually one of the toughest materials for us to market. Uh, 
people are producing less glass containers now than they used to, so there's less of a demand for glass. Um, our material in Peel Region, we sell to Next Cycle. We actually pay Next Cycle to take it. Uh, they're set up in Guelph. Mm. They clean it up and make new glass products out of it. Not every municipality, like Next Cycle is not big enough to take everybody's. Some municipalities have to use it for road building material. They're just, it's just one of those markets It's very difficult to, uh, to get material into. Hmm. Okay, I've got something I think uh, recognizable to most people. Into the, gre I, I, into the green bin, Chuck goes banana. Once you've eaten the banana, the Once peel goes the in, the, in, in the green okay. bin. Absolutely, okay. I'll let Aaron talk about food waste because they have a great food waste program going in New York region. Okay, tell, I, I t the point is we should be consuming our food. We should be consuming yeah. our food. We've done some audits over the last uh, year or two on food waste and discovered um, that unfortunately about 30 to 35 percent of the material that's in the green bin right now is unconsumed food waste, past its best before date, just bought and forgotten in the back of the fridge. So on green bin day, people are cleaning out their refrigerators and there's unconsumed waste going into the green bin. It's one of the most expensive streams that we deal with. If it, the waste is consumed and it's the banana peel, that goes to composting facilities and then the compost is used. But really, I think the end game for all of us is to make sure that we're better planning the amount of food that we purchase. We figure, um, at least in York Region, individual households can save about $1,500 a year hmm. by paying more attention to the food that they're buying and making sure they're consuming it, not putting it out in the green bin program. All right, pretend I'm a good citizen and I've eaten this banana. Uh, and Norm, I've popped this banana peel into the green bin. It's gone off to a composting facility. I've went to one many years ago as a reporter when we were open. It looks almost like a big washing machine kind of system that works. But, but what happens to my banana peel? Well, in Peel Region, we compost. Banana peel, Peel Region, the, nice one. Peel Region. <laughs> we compost our green bin material, produce it, and we have a number of markets. Some of it goes to the agricultural industry. Some of it goes back to our residents to use on their lawns and, and flower beds, that sort of thing. Uh, we're now looking at using anaerobic digestion instead of composting for green bin material. We're just studying different technologies. Which is basically like bacteria? What is that? Basically okay. bacteria will eat it. Uh, City of Toronto already uses anaerobic digestion. Uh, one of the big advantages is you produce biogas, which is a renewable type of energy. Uh, you can use that in your fleet of trucks, you can use it in buses, you can uh, produce electricity with it and it's green energy. Mm. All right, uh, we got a couple more items I wanna get through and we don't have tons of time, but I'm gonna bring these up. So everyone has one of these nowadays, lifespan of these things in terms of how long we keep them, quite short, cell phone, batteries. What do we do? What am I, where am I supposed to put these? I know where I'm supposed to put them because my husband yells at me all the time when I put it in the wrong place. But anyway, tell us, Aaron. So for the, the cell phone, it's called Waste Electronics. Once you're uh, finished with it, we accept it both at our community environmental centers and as part of our, um, at our other waste depots. It goes, we have a processor that's based out of Barry. They're called Geep. They do um, recycle the cell phones, basically dismantle them, and then they use some of the subcomponent parts are used in manufacturing new uh, new phones. So it's an Ontario-based um, recycling uh, so process. I gotta, but I gotta take these things to a location. You do, you have to take these things to okay. a location. But those locations are 24 seven in your region. They're, they're not, not 24-7, they're but they're, they're established seven, locations. But there's, there's six different locations that you can take your materials to. In the case of batteries, we do accept um, batteries as well, and it's the same, um, same kind of thing. There are some re battery recyclers in Ontario. They um, are shipped the, the batteries. They're basically dismantled, and some of the elements are used in the manufacturing of new batteries. Same situation, similar? Same situation in Peel Region. You have to bring them to one of our community recycling centers. Uh, both the telephone and the, the batteries. Uh, people, we find they actually like our community s recycling center because they're one-stop shopping, the yeah. whatever the opposite also of shopping Also in communities that have a lot more people in cars, it's hard to haul all the, you know, big amounts of batteries yeah. if you have some. Now, with batteries, what we are seeing pop up a little bit more, and we just got one of these in our office this week, is a recycling can. It's run by a, a company here in Ontario. Uh, they put it in, you, you kind of help them out as the building you know, manager and workers can come in and just put them in. So that's where I'm going to be dropping my batteries off. Okay. Urban myth, these turn into fertilizer at any point? Um, rechargeable batteries, not an urban myth. <laughs> they do, they do some, 
they recycle the metal from the batteries. They take the chemicals out of, out of them, and some of the chemicals that are in rechargeable batteries are converted into fertilizer. Okay. Ex expensive to do all of this stuff? Yes and no. Expensive. Yes and no. Yeah. 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 I mean, household hazardous waste is, or is the most expensive stream that we deal with. We don't get a lot of, of tons, but definitely on a unit cost basis, it's, uh, it is very expensive to, to deal with all these kinds of small quantities. Mm. But it's important because us as municipalities, we're not only responsible for waste, we're responsible for the sewer system, the drinking water. We don't want these materials it, you know, disposed of by the sewer system or have these chemicals enter our water stream. So we have a vested interest in making sure the right thing's done with them. Go ahead, Norm. Just on, on my answer, yes or no, you know, landfilling of waste, garbage, that costs us by the time we collect it and, and get rid of it, about $150 a ton. $150 a ton? A ton. Batteries can cost us up to $1,000 a ton. So it, it's a big number. When yeah, you're and I mean, we use batteries to, for almost everything nowadays, right? But a battery, it's, it's about five cents a battery. So when you think, you know, what it costs you to buy a battery to pay another five cents to properly dispose of it, it's not a big price. Hmm. Okay, toothbrushes, right? I've used them three months. I think my dentist tells me to use one, chuck them out. Light bulbs, and I know light bulbs are changing the kinds of light bulbs uh, we make, we use, that, that are made. Where these, uh, I'm gonna be honest, maybe I'm getting this wrong, I'm putting these in the garbage and I'm putting this on the counter because I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> right. And I don't think you're alone in that. It, just with the toothbrushes, they, are, they do go in the garbage because in York Region, uh, we have a big diversion from landfill program using energy from waste facilities. We have three energy from waste contracts right now. So at least we're extracting the fuel value out of those plastic toothbrushes. So uh, you're doing the right thing with those. On, on light bulbs, you know, all light bulbs now are not the same. Definitely the, the regular, the old school light bulbs. We um, ask residents in York Region, and I believe in Peel, those go in the, in the garbage stream still. Uh, for the, the swirly light bulbs, you may have seen those, the compact fluorescents. We want to make sure that those are not put in the garbage because they do have some mercury in them. Mm -hmm. And we send those to uh, facilities that have a, a two-step process to get the mercury out of them where it's shipped and reprocessed into manufacturing compact fluorescents. I want to go back to these. You incinerate these things? What do you do with these? Yes, yeah, we, we would send them. if they, they will end up in, like you said, you'll put them in your garbage stream. We send most of our garbage garbage after recycling to an energy from waste facility and they're incinerated. That's uncommon though. You're, both your jurisdictions have incinerators. That, that is not a province-wide thing. It, it, most, municipalities, most municipalities, pardon me, um, don't have that as an option. Most municipalities still landfill their garbage. Uh, Peel Region, just like our, we believe in getting the highest and best use out of every, every material or every product. Mm. Um, for us to add materials to our blue box for recycling though, we need to have viable, reliable markets. We can't add a material one week and then remove it the next and add it back in again. It confuses the public. Uh, toothbrushes are a good example of composite materials that are difficult to recycle. You know, there's just not a viable market for them yet. There's rubber in the handle, there's plastic, there's nylon. To separate those materials and recycle them, it's just not mm. happening yet. Um, and I agree with Aaron, if, if it can't be recycled, if it's not being recycled, you're better to extract the energy value than to landfill. Here's the thing though, when I stand out, so my collection day was this morning, so say last night, you know, and I'm exaggerating slightly here, but I have found myself standing outside looking at my blue bin and looking at my composting bin and looking at my garbage bin, I don't know what to do with this. And I'm going to be honest with you, what I do is go, look away, garbage, that's where it goes. So. I know that's not, yeah, I know you should scold me for that, Aaron, but if you can make, other than that, it is not a good recommendation, but one recommendation to we consumers, us household owners and renters, to make the whole system work better, what should I do? I'd, I'd say be sure what, what you're doing. We don't want contamination, the blue box and the green bin, so if you are defaulting to your um, garbage, that's probably the best thing to do, except for household hazardous waste and batteries. Definitely don't want that in the residual waste. But we understand the systems are complex, so know what your local programs are. Make sure you're participating. We don't want recyclables that are in the garbage stream. Get those out, get them into the blue box. The green bin program in York Region, we take diapers, we take pet waste, we take sanitary products. Get those out of the garbage as well and fully participate in your local municipal programs. I'm gonna ask the same question in a second, Norm, but 
I'm glad you brought up diapers. I got two two-year-olds. Oh we live gosh. in Toronto. Yeah, well, that, that's hard enough, but we're talking about <laughs> diapers. Um, and when I had my eldest kid, I asked around the neighbor, where do we throw diapers? And I got every answer from people. Like, where do diapers go? So Please in, say I got this right. In York Region <laughs> and in the city of Toronto, uh, both of our green bin programs, we take diapers. So the diapers go in with the other compostable materials, your banana peels and the other, um, hopefully, uh, uh, not, not unconsumed food waste, but the other uh, compostable materials. We send that to a composting facility. It, through a biological process, it's converted into a soil amendment, and then it's used in the Ontario uh, agricultural industry, landscape industry. Phew. Put mine in my oh. green bin. What about, what do I, if I come to peel, what am I doing with my dirty diapers, if, pal? If you come to peel, your diapers go in the garbage. And that's, I mean, that's one of the challenges in Ontario is different municipalities have different programs. York and Toronto, they go in the green bin. Almost every other municipality, they go in the garbage. Uh, we are looking, as I said earlier, at anaerobic digestion. If we implement that type of technology, we'll add them to our green bin as well. Okay. I come back to you, Norm, with that same question. Give me some advice. How, how do I just be a better player in all this as a consumer in a household? A tip. I think the two things I'd say is one is, is educate yourself. Every municipality has some sort of online tool to tell you where waste goes. Find it, get it on your, on your smartphone. Uh, in Peel, it's called Where Does It Go? In Toronto, it's called Waste Wizard. Aaron, I forget the name that it was in the... Bindicator. The Bindicator. The Bindicator. Yeah. So that's the first thing I'd say. Second thing is don't beat yourself up. You don't have to be perfect. We don't expect you to be. Uh, do your best. If, if you think it's recyclable and you put it in the blue box, I'm not going to yell at you. Um, <laughs> the one thing, though, is if, if it seems hazardous, if it seems like it's got chemicals in it, if it's got mercury, well, think a little bit longer about those materials. Try to get them to the proper disposal. Okay, after uh, we're done the show and I eat my banana and I eat all my prunes, I'm, s I'm still at the office. When I throw these in my office, or say I was at the mall, at, in, in their bins, um, does, that, would that, does that change any of the answers that you've given me so far if I'm throwing this out at somewhere that's not my home? Absolutely does, Pia. Uh, we see in the, wh where you work and where you shop and uh, in your house, there's different, um, different systems. Municipalities are responsible for taking waste from residences. It's still um, largely a privately managed system if you're at the mall or at your place of work. And so the, the diversion from landfill numbers are not the same performance. I mean, right now, I think many municipalities are first and foremost trying to change the standards of how that, that mall is built, how that place of work is built, so that there can be in-office separation of these materials, because we've just talked about that separation function is key to making sure that the materials can get to markets if there is a market for them. So we got to start there, um, but there's much more work to be done. The, the diversion behavior at work is not the same as we see in the houses. The programs are not there for the institutional, commercial, and industrial sector like they are in your house. This is good stuff. Thank you both. Toothbrush for each of you. <laughs> there you go. Thank Norm you. and Aaron, thanks a lot. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.